Leadership is the cause. Everything else is simply effect. If what you see is not good enough for you, then the reason behind it is leadership failure. If something is going well in your life, then the reason behind is the leadership capacity that you exercise or that is exercised on your life. Your mind is a national treasure. And that's why you are called here. It's a national treasure. You happen to own it. It's like a more like a computer. The software and the operating system you have on it will dictate the outcome or the performance. On Thursday, you have been engaged and been trained and been equipped with several things. But again, you need to have an operating system that can activate the knowledge you have now in your mind in order to make it function. I have got a laptop, it has got a lot of data on it, but sometimes I fail to operate it because I don't know how to operate the system itself. But once you master the system, then you can do a lot more. We have capacities in our minds we have never even thought about. Somebody said, I'm just quoting that, uh, by the time we die, we have only used 10%. The best of us, like Albert Einstein, have used only 10% of their capacities. So the 90 went unutilized. And somebody said that uh, when you want to find the, uh, the wealthiest part, part, part in the world is just the graveyard. You know, the unsung songs, the unacted films, all they lie there in the, in the dead, with the dead bones. Because the people did not use their mind. And it's true. So when we engage your mind, we are not actually trying to bring some academics to you. It's about provoking your way of thinking and seeing things. I had somebody who was uh, communicating here talking about a narrow mind. It can be a large mind or a very narrow mind. It depends on how you treat it yourself. You can choose to enlarge it by thinking critically or go to the traditional mode. Once you try something once and you hit a wall, you give up immediately because you know it's not, it's not going to work. But when you think critically, you engage your mind beyond the horizon. You believe that there is a solution to every problem. To find that solution, it requires labor. The greatest work man can ever do is to think. Some people don't think. Others just think. But others really think. I generally give a story. Let me start with that one because it's just already. If you have ever heard of it, don't mind. But if it's the first time, enjoy. Three friends were having a lousy afternoon. And one of them suggested, this is too lousy. Let us do something active. This was Mr. Hare, Mr. Leopard, and Mr. Elephant. So they suggested to have a stroll around the village. And they said, oh, it's OK. So they began, you know, taking time going around the village. But as they were moving, they felt bored with the exercise. And one suggested, Mr. Hare, let us put the niche on this one. Whoever stumbles, we eat. And they all agreed, OK, you stumble, we eat you. The first one to stumble was Mr. Hare himself. And they said, ha ha, this is the deal, we eat you. And he said, no, wait a minute. What, what then? I was thinking. They asked him what we are thinking about. You see, we are going this way, but everything else is going the other side. He said, what? Well, wait a minute. Oh, we hadn't realized that one. So he was exempted, he was not eaten. <laughs> now they continue to stroll. Mr. Leopard stumbles. I said, ah, we are eating here. He said, no, 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 wait a minute. Don't eat me. I said, what? He said, you see, I've been thinking. And they asked him, what have you been thinking about? He said, um, 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 I was just thinking. That was not reason enough, so he was eaten. Now there remains two, just two guys, a tiny guy and a huge mountain. And the huge one stumbles. 
And he's standing here as crushy as someone said, oh, I'll keep quiet on that one. <laughs> so, don't start trouble. <laughs> so they move on. And they come across an ant hill, which was, you know, no longer flying, not, not having termites. So Mr. Hare goes through one hole, comes out the other side, and I know this. It, it was so good gymnastics to watch. And Mr. Levert was amazed and said, how do you do it? Teach me. And said, OK, bring your trunk. I'll teach you. And then he brought his trunk and weaved it through. You know, it didn't happen initially, but he weaved it through the whole one. And then until when he tied a knot somewhere. And Mr. Levert started to, you know, to move out. And he could not. By the time he realized that he was in trouble, he was already fucked. And then the guy came behind him and said, now nah, I saw you stumble, I'm going to eat you. I said, no, 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 you're not eating me. At least eat me from the front. He said, no, no, I'll get shy when I'm eating my own friend. So he ended up being eaten. Why was Mr. Elephant eaten by his tiny thing? I just want to answer. We know Mr. Leopard, Mr. Hare was spared because he was thinking. The other one was eaten because he was just thinking. Why was Mr. Elephant eaten? He was not thinking. No. Some of us do that many times. All the troubles we go through, we fall through or into, and we feel we are really eaten up by the troubles, it is because we did not think. We thought we are thinking, but we did not think. Or if we dared think, we were just thinking. Now, the task which has been given, handed over to you, like district, laboratory, focal, persons, it implies that everything pivots around you. If you fail the system, you are going to fail the nation. It's a national task. It's not a district task. But the success has got to be registered nationally. You have an international accreditation. You can see the concentration. This is how it should be everywhere on this map. That we have managers that are managing the board tree and they are focal persons. Things hinge or pivot around them. In order to be able to do that, you need to an open mind. Open mind. There can be an empty, and then we can have some closed minds. An empty mind behaves just like one which is empty. An open mind behaves in a way that it is open to new challenges. You have some content, but you realize there could be more. When you think traditionally, you try once, you try second, and then you give up. But when you have a critical mindset, you analyze situations, you engage your mind, even when the session is over. I'm an artist by profession. When I'm, when I'm dealing with your portrait, I have something I look at and then make an artistic impression of it. I mark details, even the size of your mouth and the, your nostrils. I, I, they are important because that makes the difference. I've got, I, had, I had brothers that passed on, but one of them, we just looked like the same. I was five years older than him, but at one time, I looked in my photo album and I saw him and I thought it was me. What a shock. But on scrutiny, I realized that, oh, my ears are more protruded than his. <laughs> you see? Some settings are confusing. You need to have a critical mind. You dig and dig and dig deeper. There is no solution that cannot be solved. It's just your mind that limits you. Now, if you have an open mind, you can even listen to a source which seems to be very wild. In championing the cause, the task which is given to your child to see that Uganda has got an internationally accredited laboratory service system, it is about you. 
the problems you encounter there. How do you, how do you handle them? With an open mind or with an empty mind? You should exercise open minds. So uh, here I am. I'm not a medic. I don't even know how to operate a, micro, a, a, a microscope. I don't know. And I, even microphones, I try. But microscopes, I don't know. I cannot even inject a person, even a cockroach, I cannot attempt. <laughs> but I stand before you to at least give my contribution to this. Is it, is it helpful? Yeah. So be engaged for it. When somebody is talking to you, listen. Listening is a hard work because you pay attention and listen and grasp every communication. And you can ask that person, did you say this? You met this? Once you understand, it's okay when they go away. You can separate the trash, uh, you know, the rubbish from the, the good things without their knowledge. Don't show them that I, I can't listen to you. You open your mind. It pays. I'm 58. I know. By experience, it pays. I'm better in life because I have an open mind. When a young kid is talking to me, I listen. When my wife is talking to me, I listen. When I'm leading congregation, I listen. When you fail to listen, you are closing your mind. And you are the one who is going to lose it all. You are either an educated fool who cannot see to eat that you can take the one one nut from the other, you know, tired and move on. A lunatic is better than you. You are better than him because of the gown and, you know, that thing you put on your graduation day, <laughs> which is not good enough. Life is so practical. Now, we go to tea. If we have a nation like Uganda, they should come and they will indicate no district has everything. So we talk about a team, just like I have on a football team. You don't have all strikers on a team and expect to win. Do you? You need some left wingers, right wingers, midfielders, with the goalkeeper, and then the defense line. And this task, not as a district unit, but just as a national team. The success of Ibanda should be success of everywhere else. You, get, you, you cannot measure just by one unit score, you are failing. Every structure is made up of several systems, and every system has specific components. Now, the strength of any structure depends on the, weak, the strength of the weakest company, its weakest component. The structure is as strong as its weakest component. Let us think about that. Any structure, even this one, it is as strong as its weakest component. If you have done mechanics, you have done anything, but any structure is as strong as its weakest component. So don't get your strength by the strongest. Get your strength by the weakest. A chain which can hold a train, it is made up of single units of, you know, chain links, chain links. But one weak link will cause the chain to collapse. Not the entire chain, but one bit is weak, it breaks, uh, breaks loose, and the entire thing collapses. So, when you want to, you know, to do it good, always look at your strength in terms of what is your actual weakness. Whenever you are strong in an area, your weakness is just there. Whenever you are weak in an area, amazing thing is that your strength is just there. So there's nothing to discard. God created us just like that. We are weak in certain areas and strong in certain areas. So, if you want to have a functional team that's going to affect the task which has been given to you, which is national, you must, you must look and attend to their weak points because you are as strong as your weakest component. Again, with systems, somebody said, we live in a universe of order governed by systems of laws. 
I repeat it, we live in a universe of order, governed by systems of laws, principles. There is a reason why the sun has risen this morning. There is a principle that is being applied. If the sun fails to come up at the appropriate time, your clock says it's midday and you have not seen the sun, I know the places that will be flocked with the people, churches and mosques. People preparing themselves to go to heaven. So there is a system that operates everything. Now, the task you are given is also built on a structure and it runs some system. Yesterday I came into spy and see how you are pro progressing, what is being fed into your minds so that I can build on it today. So the bulk of the information, all of it is important. You, you have been doing checks and balances here, you know, what did you take yesterday? What did you capture? They are trying to make sure that you get the principles right. Because those principles are supposed to operate the system. Any missing component, any weak component will cause a collapse to the structure and also will cause the system to malfunction and not produce what it's supposed to produce. There are many things, you can study many systems, but all systems are made up of individual components. So, a team has got eight components that make it tick. It has got people who think, we call them plants. They think. Then we have what we call monitor evaluators. So not everyone on the team is everything. You find that you have strengths just like a normal football team. We have plants and they are capable of doing certain things and we have monitor evaluators who are capable of doing certain things. And we have resource investigators who are supposed. Now, it works like this. The plants produce an idea. Because you cannot, everything we see around us is a product of an idea. Can we qualify that one? Yes. Okay. So you have to pick the best one and you champion that. So a team is not supposed to go in the field aimlessly. You must have an idea. You are working around. You have been here for the last two days. What is the idea being co communicated? What's the challenge? Sometimes leaders just give us a challenge. We need this. And then you where is it? Then he wants you to think. As you think, you'll find a way of getting it. Because the Muzungu says, wherever there is a will, there is a way. Nothing drops from heaven down here. God stopped that when he was in, in the wilderness. He dropped manna, and that was the end. Everything we need is here on planet Earth. If Uganda laboratory service is going to maintain that accreditation, international accreditation, it is your challenge, guys. You have to make it, or else, it is very easy to give you that score, that accreditation, but if you don't perform the expectation, you are swept off the chart, and it becomes hard to go back there. So as managers, I believe, you have that challenge of creating brilliant ideas that makes this service better and simpler with every passing day. The first mobile phones we received here in the meantime were like bricks. Bricks, but now we have and little functions. But they have become smaller and more, more functional, more useful. Why? People keep on thinking. In the 60s, my father drove a Mercedes Benz. If I brought it now, it's just good for the museum. Because the latest version we cannot even afford. Probably the president can afford. It's so beautiful. The label has stayed put. That you look at it and you know that's the base. But it looks it seems like it's manufactured from the moon compared to the other one. What is happening? People, teams in a Benz, Mercedes Benz, keep on thinking and thinking what else can we change and make the product better and to keep ourselves in the market. In the 60s, we had a few Japanese cars, very few, called Galant, and we had the Toyota Corolla. Now, if you were to look at them now, you cannot match them 
with what we have. They have changed this engine, they have changed its bodies, they have changed its capacities because they keep on thinking. Now, as a Ugandan team of managers who are four core persons, you must engage your minds and think. You need people who think. When you are short of money, you go to the bank. Now, when you are short of ideas, what should you do? You look for somebody who has got ideas. It's not a shame if you, your home is failing and your neighbor is succeeding. Go and go and live. <laughs> 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 when you tell you what, what. <laughs> But if you think you are the captain of a sinking ship, you are going to die for nothing. Ask around. You don't have ideas. Somebody has got ideas. You are good at something else. You are not good at ideas, but you are good. Maybe at, uh, you know, evaluating. Once you pass an idea, you have to process it to a second, another level of, do you have the resources to do it, to implement it? There are people who are good at doing that. They are so good at doing that. So when you have them on your team, they help you to proceed towards the level of implementation. A good idea that is not implemented will never be realized. It stays in the books. The team must have people who can evaluate the idea and pass it on and find resources and have it implemented. Then you have another set of people whom are called shapers. These are task-oriented. Whatever idea you are working on, there should be people who are, you know, pressing for its success. Re re redundancy and falling back is a common disease to, you know, for development. I had laborers working for me. Whenever it came to lunch hour, I could just hear a voice, Midi! Midi! And I said, what, is, what do they mean by Midi? I inquired what it means. They said, it's lunch time. I said, okay, lunch time, respect that. Only to find out that these guys were sitting under a shed waiting for time to pass. I said, now, what, what's the meaning of midi when you're not eating anything? <laughs> so I offered them donuts for extra service. I said, ha, you are the good boss. I cultivated a lot of energy from them because I gave them one donut, a big one, this big size. Instead of enjoying the shade without food, now they are enjoying work with just a donut. So there are people who think and already think and cause work progress. So they are coordinators and they are completer finishers and team builders. These components are very essential. Now when the results come back and you find that you are one of them, you have scored high, I want you to regard yourself as I say, your mind is a national so that capacity is not for Uganda alone. It is supposed to be for the entire nation. Just like this idea, somebody's idea to construct this does not serve people who come here. It serves the entire nation, national purpose. So the same goes with what is in your mind, what is in your capacities. If you are a plant, you contribute to this team a team that champions a national task so that we maintain the standard of international accreditation. The Muzungu does not eat more food than we eat. They don't have more intelligence than we have. They don't have resources we can't access. They are just like us. At this pest at the administration tell them, we are a team. We want to send representatives to go to that country which is succeeding, we want to interview, we want to uh, you know, explore and find out how they do things. Exploration is good. When you come back, you'll be better people. You'll be better. If they can get, bring me here to train you, there are other trainers who are much better than me in these things. You seek them. Uganda has got all it takes to be like America. When you take the citizens or the residents of New York, bring them to Uganda, and you take this residence of Kampala, New York, and you give them 10 years. What do you think will happen? <laughs> Kampala will begin to look like 
New York. And in New York, we begin to look like. <laughs> what is the problem? <laughs> So when we engage your mind, we are trying to challenge you to think outside your limits. We sometimes call it think outside the box. Go outside the patterns, you know. You must have a common idea. You must rally behind a common idea. Whoever does not appreciate that idea, does not render support that idea's formation, you know that they are dropped out of the tribal system. They are no longer part of you. They are just being paid to exist in the tribe, but they are not tribe members. They will give up the cause. They will betray the cause. They are traitors. They can be collaborators within trying to undermine the process. So I don't think you have that kind of mentality, but it's very easy to develop. Like if you are offended by the leadership, you can end up having a different attitude. You are serving to get the money, but you are no longer serving to champion the idea. You get me? It's very, that's what is killing government entities. Bureaucracies are too much. There's a lot of disconnection among workers. There's nothing they share in common, but tribes share a lot in common. A common cause, shared values, and they can give in all their resources to make it happen because they belong to that tribe. You cannot go to Kalamoja and get a woman just by giving their sugar cane until you produce the cattle. They won't give you a tribe. All of them, recently a friend of mine, in fact a, a colleague, went to be introduced somewhere in the east. And the elders sat around as if they are the ones who produced it, produced this cigar. <laughs> and they made the charges, 10 million, 10 cows, and as if it's easy for Uganda to go and get this cow. <laughs> <laughs> who are doing it? The tribe? <laughs> they say, kept on, you know, this is part of our culture, this is part of our tribe. Because a, a tribe has a culture, and that culture is built around values. And the values are set upon a pivotal idea. If somebody came from Kampala and came here and told you that on the way he found a purple cow, <laughs> yeah, huh? you are laughing, a purple cow, that is seen one. Would you think they are crazy? Yeah, because we hardly see purple cows, I've never seen one. Recently we saw some yellow pigs. <laughs> but you know how that one came about. A tribe has a celebrated idea a common agenda towards which they pour all their resources. Basically that it is. It's not about manager or being a leader. It's about efficiency in executing a role. Sometimes a complete official can be a good manager. Sometimes the team leader can be a good manager. Because those are other qualities which you have not explored. But these are natural traits we find it ourselves in every setting of life as it comes to us. So, uh, if you are studying management and are going to become a manager, it's good if you know your baby score. Because in your execution, you will know your limits and apply the strength and find somebody else to buffer your weaknesses.